This is Mornings with Brian. If you're just joining us, Brian's out. Ron is here. Dari's mm-hmm. here. I'm Lauren, and I'm here. And Pastor Scott Lessing is here, here of Grace Ooh. Church in Middleburg hey. Heights. We're excited that you're with us. A topic of the week. We just did it yesterday, but it was a was that yesterday? Yes, that was it was. yesterday. <laughs> it's been a long week. Um, okay. Uh, yesterday we were talking about the Kansas City Chiefs kicker Harrison Butker commencement speech at Benedictine College. I am sure you have heard about this, even if it wasn't from us. It's everywhere it right now. It is everywhere. It is everywhere, which makes me say we need to be talking about it. Mm-hmm. Sure. If everybody else is talking about it, so do we, because that's what the goal and mission of this show is. Yeah. Is what is everyone talking about and how can we look at it with a Christian and biblical view? For sure. So that's why we're talking about it. So I'm going to start, for those of you who may not know, get into a little bit of it, and then we'll discuss some feedback we got, what everyone thinks. I want to hear what Pastor Scott thinks, all kinds of stuff. Okay. So this is a, I'm reading from an article, Church Leaders. I also have another one from uh, NBC News. Okay. So this one uh, is Harrison Butker slams current administration and Taylor Swift during controversial commencement address at Benedictine College. Mm-mm. Okay. So he had a lot of things to say. It's yes, a 15 minute commencement speech. So there's 20. a lot. 20? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> 20 minute commencement speech. So there's a lot in there. Um, but I'm picking out pieces that I wanted to talk about. If you would like to go listen to the whole thing, you are welcome to go do so. You can find it almost anywhere. Harrison Butker, you can go find it. Um, I'm going to pick out a few things that I wanted to discuss and we did talk about earlier. So he talks to the men of the graduating class. So remember, these are graduating college students, 21-ish to like 24, 25-ish years old. Okay, A lot of them started college during COVID or went to college their senior year or high school, their senior year of COVID. Okay. So he's, uh, talks to the men. Um, he addresses the men and then he just uh, addresses the women. Um, he has some things, some really great things to say. One of them says, I've seen it firsthand how much happier someone can be when they disregard the outside noise and move closer and closer to God's will in their life. Mm-hmm. If it glorifies God, maybe you should lean into that over something that you think suits you better. Mm. That's great. Mm-hmm. That's a great word. It okay? is. And it's true. He also says, when you rekindle your knowledge and adherence to many of the church's greatest traditions, you will see how much more colorful and alive your life can and should be as you move on from this place. This place meaning college. Mm. Which is true. He's trying to push them to see, like, there's more to life than just college. There's more to your calling than just college. You know, God has called you to something. Um, and, you know, look for that as well, not just you know, the things of this world. Those are great comments. Um, And then he, as he discusses to the women, he says, many of you who are sitting here now about to cross this stage are thinking about all the promotions and titles you're going to get in your career. But I would venture to guess that the majority of you are most excited about your marriage and the children you'll bring into this world. Uh, And then he starts to talk about his wife. He says, I can tell you that my beautiful wife, Isabel, would be the first to say that her life truly started when she began living her vocation as a wife and as a mother. I'm on the stage today and able to be the man I am because I have a wife who leans into her vocation. I'm beyond blessed with the many talents God has given me, but it cannot be overstated that all of my success is made possible because the girl I met in uh, in class in middle school class would never would convert to the faith, become my wife and embrace one of the most important Titles of all, homemaker. Isabel's dream of having a career might not have come true, but if you ask her today, she if she has any regrets on her decision, she would laugh out loud. Okay, so he got a lot of backlash. For well, the, in the moment, though, he, he, I mean, people were cheering and celebrating. Yes, at the college, yeah. Right. And then once mm-hmm. it was, the video was made public, he got a lot of backlash, which I don't think anyone is surprised by no. those comments because no. he is holding traditional conservative values yes which we're not disparaging yes which i would like to talk about now daria thank you for bringing it up i think we talked about this yesterday i think a lot of people heard me bring up this topic and did not hear a word i said Mm -hmm. (laughs) i think they heard that i said this man's name and that i was talking about it and so they assumed that i was saying something that i did not say 
And to those people, I would love for you to go back and to watch our YouTube stream from yesterday and to actually listen. Mm -hmm. As I say to my almost four-year-old son, please turn your listening ears on and listen to what I said. <laughs> Don't just assume that you know what I'm saying That's right. because you have assumptions about me or my positions on things, but actually listen to what I said. Because what is true is that he can have these values. Yes. And I said several times yesterday that these are good values, that I'm glad he's talking about them, that mm -hmm. he made a lot of good points. Yep. But a lot of that kind of went out of people's brains because of the things that he said later. The greatest thing I talked about yesterday was that he says that he and his wife would agree her life started. Began, his, yeah. Her mm -hmm. life began when she became a wife and a mother. Which is a good thing to be. Being a wife and a mother, of which I am both, mm -hmm. and so joyful about, and I love being a mom, and I love being a wife. I'm literally obsessed with my family. Okay, I have to keep that in check <laughs> because of how obsessed I am with them. That is not where my value lies. My life did not begin when I had a son almost four years ago. Right. My life did not begin eight years ago when I married my husband. Well, there's a lot of problems with that statement. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So what if, what if you're a wife and you can't conceive children? Yep. Does that mean that your life will never begin? Exactly. And right. we got a lot of comments of that sort of saying, okay, well, I, we had one listener that said at her college graduation, she was suffering from a breakup and she was still very heartbroken about it. And now 12 years later, she is still single and has been a missionary for seven and a teacher for two. Does that mean that her life hasn't started exactly. yet? No. Right. No, it doesn't. Right. And I think that we get lost in someone spouting Christian values that we just accept it all as good when it's not. Right. Because saying that someone's life starts when they get married and have a child is not what biblical personhood is. No. Right. That well, is not who Christ says we are. No. You, you can highly regard your marriage. You can highly yes. regard being a parent. Yes. Right? But you cannot make it that that is when life begins or ends. Yes. Right? Because mm -hmm. if life begins, then what happens when your spouse dies? Does that mean your life ends too? Yeah. And what, what about Kids heaven? Kids out of the house. Like when eternity, there is no marriage. Yeah. So help me understand that. Right. What's his name? Harrison. 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 Well, this yeah. has kind of been a general theme of the show the last couple of weeks where we have been talking about how a lot of people worship motherhood. Mm. Again, motherhood's a great thing. We all have great relationships with our mothers, love them dearly. It's a good thing, but it's not your identity and you cannot worship your value as a mother and you cannot worship your kids because when your kids move out of the house, you have an identity crisis and then sometimes those relationships strain because your kids need a little bit of space. Yes. Yeah, and so I have a problem with, I will say it again, so you are listening and you hear me. He has a lot of great values. He has Christian biblical values. Yeah. What I was honing in on is him saying that someone's life begins when they have become a wife or a mother. Yeah. Some of those women that were sitting under his speech will not become wives, will not become mothers. And it was not the time nor the place for him to say that. Yep. It's okay for him to have those values. They are good values. But it was like, can you please read the room? These are 21-year-old women who are excited about careers that they might be having because they just studied for four years. <laughs> right. They're excited. They just they probably spent a lot of money on on this college degree that they're trying to be excited about today. Right. They put in a lot of hard work. You don't see the him addressing the men saying your life will begin when you father children. No. Yes. And had he ha, had he summed this up with like go into the world, do good work, but don't forget your families and remember that our our boss Josh Vio says your first ministry is your family always mm -hmm. and i appreciate that had he said something similar no one will be having this conversation right. yeah i think there's a lot of ways that he could have said it differently and i think that we can agree that he has great values and also agree that he needed somebody to help him write that speech so it didn't sound the way that it did <laughs> he but, could have gone about it in, a, in a better to way to to be fair to him though he did start out by saying I am not a professional speaker, yes. <laughs> yes. right? And he proved that to be true. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Uh, yeah. He's not a professional speaker, and that's okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But, I mean, there there's a lot of things that he could have said that were that would have been true for a graduating class going to enter the world representing Jesus that would have been true biblically. Yeah. Right? What yeah. he What he said was not true biblically. Yes. And— uh, especially uh, you're at a, at a, that, that's a Catholic, Catholic school, school, right? Mm-hmm. Um, man, you could have said a lot of things like love God, love others, right? I mean, that's what God calls us to yes. do everywhere you go, represent Jesus so that people come to know him. Instead, he put marriage on a pedestal that the Bible does not. Yes. And so our job is to just make sure that we don't get caught up in that and put it on a pedestal that the Bible does not as well. Yeah, something someone texted us is kind of along that line. It said, perhaps a more positive approach would have been to say, you're all going to walk different paths of and, and lives. Some of you are going to be surgeons, lawyers, and home or homemakers. Whatever you end up doing with your life, do it to the glory of God. That would have been yeah. great. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because I do think women need to be reminded in this day and age that it's okay if that's what you want. Um, but something else we discussed is a lot of women, I think, would like the option to be a stay-at-home mom. Um, but with the economy, it's really hard and it's not feasible for a lot of families. Um, and so people weren't happy about that either. Yeah. I have said several times on this show, and I will give everyone the benefit of the doubt, you can't listen to a show for three hours a day, five days a week, every single week. But I've said several times, yes, the ideal would be to be a stay-at-home parent, to be able to be the only person that has that you know is able to care for my kids that's not that's not an option for me and my family it's not right and that's okay and that's okay right the the scriptures don't say that you should stay home and just take care of your kids that's that's not what the scripture says so i'll I'll speak on lauren's behalf please don't text in and claim to know anyone's financial picture <laughs> don't you cla- don't don't claim mm-hmm. to know what sacrifices she is or is not making for her children mm-hmm. we got some of those and um i'm upset on her behalf thanks Staria. because she's a wonderful mom and she works really hard she works late into the night because she has to flex her hours so she can be there for her kids we have been discussing harrison butker's statements at the benedictine college commencement it is everywhere so i'm sure you've heard about it we're already in our conversation here. If you've missed stuff, I'm sure you can go watch it on YouTube. Everything's on YouTube. Uh, today's <laughs> conversation and yesterday's, so okay. you can get the full picture. Okay. So you can go check it out on YouTube because I don't want to get sidetracked with going starting back from the beginning. So check it out on YouTube, yesterday's uh, discussion or what we've already discussed today. Pastor Scott, where I want to go with you now. Yeah. I want to go on. <laughs> I want to go on a <laughs> rant about what is biblical personhood. Yeah. Okay. First, I would like, before we do that, I would like you to talk with us about uh, the role of a woman in, and does she have to be a homemaker? Is it okay for her to want to be a lawyer? The problem, the problem in a lot of today's society is we are pitting stay-at-home moms versus working moms. Correct. And I am so tired of it. Yeah. So the question is, can you be a mom, can you love your children, and work at the same time? Yes. So that's, I think that's a part of the question. Yeah. And I think people are getting mad. I think a lot of Christians are getting mad because they think that the media is saying that stay at home moms are worthless. And I don't think that's what they're saying. I don't think they're saying that. I think they're fighting for the opposite of saying, okay, but we don't all have to be stay at home moms. Right. Is there room for both is the question. Yes. Is there room for both? You know, can you be, I mean, my wife did both when our kids were young. Right when she went back to work when our kids were like preschool, early elementary school, mm-hmm. you know, she stayed home for the first four or five years for our kids. So she experienced both mm-hmm. and both are biblical because you're still a mom. It's not like because you're working, you're no longer a mother and you don't yeah. love your kids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're still loving your children. You I, help. I, I always want to have people help me understand how being a working mom means you're still a mom how is that unbiblical that's Mm -hmm. you have to prove that to me yeah because there's i don't see it in scripture actually proverbs 31 she's a working mother Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. uh so i i don't see it in scripture that says that you have to stay at home yeah um there's a lot of moms who love jesus who work and love their kids really well and they're great mothers 
Yeah. So I, I don't, I, I just don't, I don't buy it. I don't see it. Um, is it, is it great to be a stay at home mom? Sure. Is it great to be a working mom? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think we have got to stop pitting stay at home moms versus working moms against each other. Mm-hmm. Cause all moms make sacrifices. Yes. A hundred percent. And you're not saying that just because you're a working mom. Right. And, and, and that's what I think people hear. Oh, you're just saying that because you're a working mom. No, you're saying that because it's biblical. Yeah, and I've actually been a stay-at-home mom and working mom since 2020 mm-hmm. because in Chicago, we didn't go back to into the office for a very long time. And I had my son in 2020, and we didn't go back into the office, I, I would say, until 2022. Mm-hmm. And even then, it was just one day a week. So I was a stay-at-home mom. Full time, and right. I was a working mom full time. Right, and even now, we only need care outside of me and my husband for three hours a day. So I go home, and I still do care for my kids. I'm not gone from nine to five. <laughs> right. Someone in my family, right. either me or my spouse, are caring for our kids for the majority of the day. Yeah. And if you do have to put your kids in daycare from nine to five, because we, we're very fortunate that we can work from home a lot, if that's what you need to do, that's okay. Yes, of course. Some people have to do that, and I'm sure the decision kills them. Yes. Yes. So. I just wanted your thoughts on that. Now I would like to touch on the topic of when Harrison Butker of the Kansas City Chiefs in his uh, commencement speech was talking about his wife. And he said she would be the first to tell you that her life began when she became a wife and a mom. Yeah. I, and he... even I, I didn't read the full text because I'm trying to do two things at once. But there was a text that said I think he was talking about his wife, not all women. That doesn't matter. His his wife's life did not start. No, that is an unbiblical view of personhood. It, it is, and he was actually addressing all the women in the room. Yes, so he was right? talking to everybody. So he was talking to everybody, but he was also talking about his wife and her life. Yeah. Um, but she just has the. If that's really what she believes, um, it's it's not a biblical perspective. No, it's not. Right. Our only. The only value that we have is because of Christ and is in Christ. Right. We are who we are and we have value because we are made in the image of God. Correct. And that's that's period. That's done. There's yep. no more to that sentence. We are made in the image of God and that is where our value lies. I would love to hear more from him about when she came to Jesus. Yeah. Right? Because the, the, the Bible says that you're a new creation at that, right. at that moment. So you receive you know, uh, a godly spirit, it replaces the sinful spirit, mm-hmm. right? So he didn't talk at all about, like, that would have been another great thing for him to talk about. And that's where your spiritual life begins. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, and like and you so said, you're he, new. Yeah, and he got that wrong as well. Yeah. And it's okay if she feels that way. Our feelings are not always true. Yeah. Right? So her feelings yes. are, would be wrong. If that's really how she believes, that's okay. But it's... It's inaccurate biblically. Yes. And I think the problem that I have is that we as Christians like to, if there's someone speaking Christian values or ethics or morals in a public place, we want to not think critically about what they're saying. Right. If they say one thing that is a Christian value or moral or ethic, then we're going to put them on a pedestal and nothing that they do or say can be wrong. Correct. (laughs) Even Christians make mistakes, which is kind of the point of the cross. Yes, exactly. And I just, I worry that we will take anybody that's going to say any Christian values or morals or ethics and say, well, because they're talking about it in public, it's right and it's good and it's perfect. And it's not. Well, especially, you know, in today's world, right? Yes. We have, I mean, we're coming into a very... uh, uh, it's going to be very tumultuous yeah. this this fall, right? And you have politicians who claim Christian values, yet their lives don't reflect it at all, mm-hmm. right? And sometimes even the things they say are very inaccurate biblically. Sure. And we see people put them on pedestals all the time too. Yeah. yeah. Or just because there's a nugget of truth in something doesn't mean they're not still wrong. Correct. Yeah. I just, I, right theology is such an important thing to me. Yes. I, it, it's something that I'm passionate about, that people have the right theology. Yeah. Number one, because a lot of it sets you free. Yeah. Uh, having 
right and correct theology sets us free from a lot of the things that we believe about ourselves that are not true and a lot of the things that we believe about God that are not true. And to think that your life starts and that your value only is in being a mom and a wife because that's when your life starts, that that diminishes the work and the personhood of Christ. A hundred percent. And it's not a correct view of being people. Well, and you're also you're also worshiping marriage, which we should not do. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. I mean, like they really are worshiping marriage. If that's what they believe, we, we shouldn't worship marriage either. Yeah. And and it's hard. Like I love my wife and I love our relationship and our marriage, but we have to keep it appropriate. Yeah. You know, like it, it, scripture says that there's no marriage in heaven. Yes. And is that hard for us? Sure. That's hard mm-hmm. for Maureen mm-hmm. and I. But at the same time, that's what the scripture says. And that helps you keep things in perspective. Yeah. Right. I, yeah. Like I said, I'm literally obsessed with my family and I have to keep it in check. Of course. <laughs> because then it becomes something. Worship, yeah. A worship. It becomes an idol. Our family and our kids become an idol to us. And if we start talking about ourselves, that our value or that our life starts with our family, then you start to think that way. Once you start saying that, then you start believing that. And right. that's not what's true. Well, and then you, you, not to mention all the people that are, are confused by that because then if they're not married or they don't have children or they can't have children, yeah. mm-hmm. then, then what does that say about them? Right. That, and, that, and that's where we have to be uber sensitive to Scripture, mm-hmm. right? Because we, we don't want to diminish anyone or suppress them in yeah. any way. I, I think some of what he said was actually very suppressive. Mm, yeah. And that's dangerous, dangerous. Jesus did the opposite. Yeah. If you're just joining us, you're joining in the middle of a conversation. So I would encourage you to go back on YouTube or live on YouTube and Facebook now so you can go check that out. Um, we're talking about Harrison Butker of the Kansas City Chief. Uh, he was at Benedictine College giving the commencement speech. And he talked a lot about some really great Christian ethics and values. Um, but I took some... What's the word I'm looking for? I didn't like it. There were some things <laughs> I didn't like. Thank you. I took some offense to some of the things he said um, <laughs> because they were not theologically right. Um, and Christians would like to put him on a pedestal and praise him for having these values and speaking these values. But I don't think that we're being critical listeners to what he said. Correct. And some of the things that he said are not right theology. And Correct. I am very impassioned about having right theology. Dari, you had some thoughts to it. What do you want to say? Yeah, so I was thinking last night about why people were getting so upset about this. And um, until we talked about it, I don't think I realized just how widespread this story was. And so a lot of the quote-unquote mainstream media is also talking about this. And they are saying things that are pretty similar to what we're saying. I think we've had a more nuanced and biblically focused discussion, of course. Um, But then I got to thinking about how many people distrust the mainstream media. Um, And I I actually have a degree in media, so believe me when I say I understand how it works, I understand why a lot of people don't trust it. Um, But just because someone you don't agree with says something, that doesn't mean it's wrong. Um, Mm. So, yes, we are saying things that are kind of in line with what other people who are not Christians are saying. That does not mean that they are wrong and you have to disagree with them on everything, and that does not necessarily mean that we are wrong either. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. I think I was thinking about this too yesterday, Daria, is if we at all talk about the things that, you know, secular media is talking about, then we must be agreeing with them. Right. Hmm. It's That's either not true. and it's like either we talk about it or like either we talk about what's going on in the world or not. And if if we don't talk about it, then we also sound out of touch and like we don't know what's happening, that we're sitting in this little studio right. with our, you know, walls with no sounds and we don't know what's happening in the world and that's not true right christians live in the real world we live in the world where the media is talking about it Mm -hmm. well and um this speech was addressed to like 21 22 year olds we know we have some listeners in that demographic who are probably thinking i wonder if that's true i wonder if my value is only in being a mother and I can tell you, I've got some friends that desperately want to be married. They desperately want to be moms. Mm-hmm. They want that so bad. And for whatever reason, God has said they can't have it, at least for now. Mm-hmm. So are you going to tell them that they're worthless? Are you going to tell your granddaughter, who's maybe frustrated that she can't get a date, is she worthless? This is why we talk about these things. That's right. Because they matter. They do matter. And, you know, one of the texts, you know, says that, you know, we need to um, have grace on Harrison. Um Listen, when you take when when you take a platform, there's a responsibility you have yeah. 
as a follower of Jesus to represent Jesus well. And we're not we're not saying that uh, anything negative about him as a person. We're just saying that so, some of the things he said were not biblical. <laughs> and, yeah, right. And and we still have grace on him. Like we'll still, yeah. you know, I would love to have a conversation with him, but he probably yeah. wouldn't want to, you know, reach out to me. But I would love to talk to him, right, and just help him understand from a biblical perspective on how some of the things he said were not accurate. And that doesn't mean we don't give him grace. True. Right? Yeah. I mean, Jesus said that we need to have grace and truth, not just mm-hmm. grace. Amen. Right? Yeah, I think what you're saying about if you're going to use, uh, he said at the beginning, like, I'm not a public speaker. I didn't ask for this platform or whatever, but I've been given it to, given, given it. Um, mm-hmm. You still have to handle it with care. A hundred percent. Especially being in the profession that he's in yes he has to handle it with care oh, he's in the he's in the spotlight all the time yeah and so yes we can give him some grace and i have i've said repeatedly that the things that he said are right and good and he has great morals and ethics and values that i agree with right there was a big part that i don't agree with and it's not because you're not a stay at home mom yes it's because theology matters yes mm-hmm. exactly and he said yes to giving the speech. Mm-hmm. So the weight upon, like you said, representing Christ is on his shoulders. For sure. And that's a, that's a weight that he has to be willing to handle with care. Right. So the things that we say here are important, right? We need to mm-hmm. represent Jesus well. True. And if not, people are going to let you know that what yeah. you said was inaccurate or wrong or mm-hmm. unbiblical, right? Yeah. And does that mean that we're not giving you grace? No, we're just balancing grace and truth, mm-hmm. right? We're going to say it in a graceful way, yeah, albeit strong, sure. But we have to tell the truth, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is not about being a stay at home mom or not. That's like absolutely not what I'm even talking about. Two of my best friends are stay at home moms, and I'm there. They, as I have said before on the show, they work harder than me. They dedicate more than me. They sacrifice more than me. Okay. This is not about being a stay-at-home mom or not. This is about stating that someone's life began when they became a wife and a mom. Correct. Yes, absolutely. There is women in that crowd that maybe didn't know what they want to do. And so maybe they do feel excited that he said that. Maybe they do feel appreciated. I know that women I went to school with was like, all I want in life is to be a mom. That's all I want in life is to be a mom. Mm-hmm. And so I'm sure he did speak to their hearts. But there's a big majority of the women there that, he pushed away with those kind of comments. Right. Well, and even we can just go to the Bible about, you know, when life begins, mm-hmm. right? And uh, this is Psalm 139. It says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, and I know that full well. Whether you're married or not, that yeah. that's the mm-hmm. truth in Scripture. Yeah. Right? So— we have to be so careful that we don't put value, uh, biblical value, on whether you're married or not. Mm-hmm. I mean, we could even say, what did Paul say? He said it's better to not be married. Yes, exactly. So if that if Paul says it's better to not be married, what what would Harrison say to that? Yeah. Or his wife, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know. And I think it does a disservice to those in the church that are single to say that. Right. On a public platform. Right. I'm not mad about the same the same reasons that the, you know, secular media is mad. Please do not hear me say that because that's no. not what I'm saying. I'm upset that he used a public platform and had, you know, theology that was uh that can be harmful to say mm-hmm. to say that someone's life begins at a certain point in their life that is not around Christ and mm-hmm. not around God. Right. That is what's harmful. Yes. Ron, you haven't said much. What do you think? Um, I hope that Harrison misses all his field goal attempts against the Browns this year. <laughs> <laughs> it is it is interesting. There, you know, there's a lot of his speech that we're not even addressing, and yeah. I think many other outlets have focused on some of those parts, and that's their prerogative to do that. Don't don't infer that that we are agreeing with them or disagreeing with them. We're just taking this one particular slice of his speech and analyzing it. And we're not, we're not picking on Harrison, per se. 
it's it's his speech that we're analyzing. Um, he's he's probably a nice enough guy. He got a contract, and so he's got talent. NFL kickers come and go, and if he's stuck around this long, you know, he does have mm-hmm. some talent. But that being said, you know, when you, like Pastor Scott said, when you agree to speak in a in a platform like this, you kind of put a, put aside any any right to privacy. Your words are going to be heard and interpreted yeah. in in the public square, and that's what we're doing. We're part of that public square. Mm-hmm.